Off the coast of England, in the churning waters of the North Sea, lies an extraordinary sight. It is a metal platform rising from the waves, a defiant testament to human ingenuity and ambition. This is Sealand, the world's most unusual micronation, perched atop a former World War II sea fort. Sealand is a testament to the enduring human desire for independence and self-determination. The waves may crash against Sealand's foundations, but its spirit remains unbroken. Sealand's story begins in the tumultuous years of World War II. The structure that would become Sealand was originally built by the British Royal Navy as a defense against German forces known as H.M. Fort Ruffs. It was one of several sea forts constructed to protect vital shipping lanes. These forts were formidable structures, armed with heavy artillery and manned by hundreds of sailors. After the war, Fort Ruffs was abandoned, left to the elements and the occasional curious visitor. It remained so until 1967, when a former British Army Major named Paddy Roy Bates saw in the dilapidated structure an opportunity to create something truly unique. Bates, a charismatic and ambitious individual, had been involved in various business ventures, including pirate radio broadcasting. He was drawn to the challenge of establishing an independent entity free from what he saw as the increasing encroachment of government regulations. Bates, along with his family and a small group of supporters, occupied Fort Rose on Christmas Eve 1966. They claimed the platform as their own, declaring it the Principality of Sealand. This audacious act marked the beginning of Sealand's improbable journey as a self-proclaimed nation. The British government was initially caught off guard by Bates's proclamation. They responded with a mixture of amusement and annoyance. Sealand's location, however, presented a legal conundrum. It lay beyond the then recognized three mile limit of British territorial waters. This legal gray area gave Sealand a glimmer of hope in its bid for recognition. Bates and his followers pressed their claim with characteristic zeal. They drafted a constitution, designed a flag, and even issued their own currency and passports. Sealand, they argued, met the key criteria for statehood. It had a defined territory, a permanent population, and a government capable of interacting with other states. The British government, however, remained unconvinced. They argued that Sealand was nothing more than an abandoned structure and its occupants were subject to British law. The stage was set for a legal battle that would capture international attention. The conflict between Sealand and the United Kingdom escalated in the 1970s. In 1978, a group of German businessmen, with the alleged backing of a disgruntled Sealand citizen, attempted to seize control of the platform. The incident, known as the First Sealand Rebellion, involved a dramatic helicopter raid and the brief taking of hostages. Paddy Roy Bates, however, was not easily deterred. He and his son Michael armed with rifles and homemade Molotov cocktails, repelled the invaders and retook their micronation. The incident cemented Sealand's image as a bastion of independence, willing to defend its sovereignty by any means necessary. The British government, while condemning the use of force, did nothing to intervene directly. This inaction was interpreted by some as tacit recognition of Sealand's de facto independence. The incident also highlighted 
the complex legal questions surrounding sealant status. In the decades that followed, Sealand settled into a period of relative calm. The Bates family continued to promote their micronation, selling titles of nobility and attracting curious visitors. The advent of the internet gave Sealand a new platform to reach a global audience. Its unique story resonated with individuals disillusioned with traditional power structures. However, the challenges of maintaining a self-sufficient entity in the middle of the North Sea remained daunting. The platform required constant maintenance and the costs of supplies and transportation were significant. In the early 2000s, the Bates family, citing their advancing age, announced their intention to sell Sealand. The asking price was a cool $906 million. While the sale never materialized, the offer sparked a new wave of interest in Sealand. It seemed that everyone from libertarian idealists to online entrepreneurs was eager to get their hands on their own sovereign state. Today, Sealand remains an enigma, a curious footnote in the annals of international relations. Paddy Roy Bates passed away in 2012, but his legacy lives on. His son, Michael, now presides over the self-proclaimed principality, continuing to assert Sealand's claim to nationhood. Despite its lack of formal recognition, Sealand has achieved a certain level of cultural cachet. It has been featured in documentaries, books, and countless news articles. Its story has inspired artists, musicians, and writers. Sealand, it seems, has tapped into a deep-seated human fascination with independence and self-determination. While its future remains uncertain, Sealand's enduring legacy is secure. It serves as a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the enduring allure of the unconventional. Sealand's impact extends far beyond its physical footprint. It has become a symbol of resistance against the established order, a beacon for those who dream of creating their own utopias. Sealand's story has resonated with individuals and groups seeking autonomy and self-governance, inspiring the creation of other micronations around the world. The legal battles fought by Sealand have also contributed to ongoing debates about the nature of statehood and sovereignty in the 21st century. Sealand's existence challenges traditional notions of territoriality and jurisdiction, raising questions about the role of technology and globalization in shaping the future of nations. Sealand's story, however, is not without its critics. Some argue that it is nothing more than a publicity stunt, a whimsical attempt to exploit legal loopholes. Others question the legitimacy of a self-proclaimed nation built on an abandoned military platform. Sealand's story is part of a larger phenomenon of micronations, self-declared states that exist outside the framework of traditional international law. These entities, often with colorful histories and eccentric leaders, challenge our understanding of sovereignty and national identity. From the whimsical to the deadly serious, micronations offer a glimpse into alternative visions of political organization and social order. The rise of the internet and the increasing interconnectedness of the world have facilitated the growth of micronations. Online platforms provide virtual spaces for like-minded individuals to connect, share ideas, and even establish their own digital nations. While these virtual entities may lack the physical presence of Sealand, they nevertheless 
reflect a growing desire for self-determination and autonomy in a globalized world. The future of micronations like Sealand remains uncertain. However, their continued existence serves as a reminder that the traditional nation-state system is not the only model for political organization. In a world grappling with issues of globalization, technological disruption, and political upheaval, micronations offer, offer, offer a glimpse into alternative futures, where the boundaries of identity, community, and belonging are constantly being redefined. Sealand's story continues to fascinate and inspire. Its enduring appeal lies in its embodiment of the human spirit's capacity for creativity, resilience, and the pursuit of unconventional dreams. In a world often defined by limitations, Sealand represents the boundless possibilities of human imagination. The story of Sealand is a reminder that even the smallest of entities can challenge the status quo and capture the world's attention. It is a testament to the power of ideas, the allure of the unknown, and the enduring human desire for freedom and self-determination. As long as there are dreamers and rebels, those who dare to challenge convention and chart their own course, the legacy of Sealand, the fortress in the sea will continue to endure.